Cross-Origin Resource Sharing, or CORS, is a mechanism that allows a website on one URL to request data from a different URL, and it's frustrated both front-end and back-end developers since the dawn of time. You may have tried to use an image on your website that lives on a different URL, only to end up with a broken image. Or, your website might try to fetch data from your API, then fail with a CORS error in the console. That happens because the browser implements the same origin policy as part of its security model, which allows a website to freely request images and data from its own URL, but blocks anything from an external URL unless certain conditions are met. When the browser makes a request, it adds an origin header to the request message. If that request goes to a server on the same origin, then it's allowed by the browser with no questions asked. However, if that request goes to a different URL, then it's known as a cross-origin request. When sending the response, the server will add the access control allow origin header. Its value needs to match the origin header on the request, or it can be a wildcard which allows any URL URL to make the request. If it's a mismatch though, the browser will prevent the response data from being shared with the client. This results in an error in the browser, but for security reasons there's very limited information about what actually went wrong. The solution to a CORS error lies on the server. If you don't control the server, you're out of luck. If you do control it, you likely just need to configure it to respond with the proper header. In Express.js, for example, that can be achieved with a single line of middleware code, which tells the server to include the CORS headers on every response. Now, certain HTTP requests like put, or any request with a non-standard header will need to be pre-flighted. Just like at the airport, it's a sanity check that ensures the passenger or request is safe to fly on the airplane or server. The browser automatically knows when to pre-flight and will first make a request using the options HTTP verb. The server will then respond saying yes, I allow this origin to make requests with the following methods, at which point the main request can happen without fear of disaster. That may sound inefficient, but the server can respond with a max H header, allowing the browser to cache a pre-flight for a certain amount of time. If you happen to be facing a CORS error right now, open the network tab in the browser, find the response, and look for the access control allow origin header. If it doesn't exist, you need to enable CORS on your server. If it does exist, the URL may be a mismatch with the website. Or, if it was pre-flighted, it may not be allowing those methods or headers in the request, all of which are things you can configure on the server. This has been Cross-Origin Resource Sharing in 100 seconds. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.